Happy New Year, boys. Unfortunately, I'm not quite done with 2018 yet. Before we leave the year behind, I I've got to do it. Go over my list of the top 10 Switch games released this past year. I'm not going to include my top handheld game from my last video since I said all I want to say about it in that video, and if you're unfamiliar with my take on these lists, I like to omit games that are overly obvious, especially if it's something nearly everyone is going to have right at the top. So this year, it should be no surprise, that game is Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Smash will not be featured on this list, again, not because it's not a great game, but because it's the overly obvious pick. We'll see how many fanboys erupt in the comments over this. With that said though, let's get started. Again, these are my top 10 Nintendo Switch games of 2018. Rounding out the list at number 10 is Mario and the Gang's grand return to the sports genre, Mario Tennis Aces. The big draw of these Mario sports games is always their over-the-top, arcadey nature. You know, from the ability to literally KO your opponents, uh, to obnoxious super moves, to a, a decent single-player mode that actually has some pretty cool boss battles. Yes, boss battles are an aspect of this tennis game. Even if you're someone who can't stand modern sports games, which typically go for the more simulation approach these days, I think you still may like this one. And this one has been a marquee title this year when it comes to Nintendo offering free updates to their games. Since its launch, there have been several new characters, stages, play modes, and items added to the game, and there's still more to come. Thankfully, this game has sold very well. Yes, it didn't flop. So hopefully that means we can expect to see Nintendo roll out even more Mario Sports titles on the Switch, because I'm still, I'm still crossing my fingers for a new Mario Strikers, guys. I'm going to cheat a little bit here and bundle Bayonetta 1 and 2 together since they were sold as a package deal. The baddest witch around has become a staple of Nintendo in recent years since the big end struck a deal with Platinum to produce the second game. And now we've got the third game in the series set to be released, I don't know, someday, but exclusively to Nintendo Switch. And what better way to get caught up on the franchise than with this collection of 1 and 2 on the Switch? You hear that, Nintendo? Maybe if you have any other games coming out, let's say that are, I don't know, the fourth game in their respective series, you should put out a collection of the past games in that series so people can get caught up with it. Sure, this was originally released on the Wii U, but come on, how many people actually owned a Wii U? You can count all of them on one hand. And even at full price, I think you can get it cheaper now, but even when it launched at $60 for both games, I still think that was a fine deal. What is up with the lights? I gotta go, I gotta go check this out. Reggie, are you still there? Reggie? The Switch game that impressed me the most this year in terms of how well it plays and how well it runs on the system has to be Diablo 3. Playing this game with four players, with tons of enemies cluttering up the screen, spells blasting all over the place, corpses flying, I figured these instances would just melt the system. But no, the game runs incredibly smooth, sure there's some dips here and there during those incredibly chaotic moments, but our baby she holds together. All these years later, Diablo 3 is still the current king of ARPGs in my opinion, and it's a fantastic title to have portable, not to mention the Ganondorf transmogs you get with the Switch version, allowing you to essentially run around as the Zelda villain, chopping demons in half, launching them across the screen. That alone is worth checking this game out if you ask me. Oh. 
Mario Party is a franchise that's had its ups and downs over recent years, but has consistently been one of the best party games there is. It's right there in the name. Inviting a bunch of people over to play games? You can't get much better than this series. Super Mario Party has an ample amount of mini games, as well as play modes, even a single player mode for those of you without any friends. Myself, I actually found the co-op mode to be pretty entertaining, where you have to actually work together. It's a good way to play Mario Party without having everyone turn on each other. And while I do actually have some friends to play with, uh, definitely not many to spare. The game makes good use of the gyro controls to add even more hilarity to playing many of the minigames. My only major complaint is that the game forces players to use a single Joy-Con as a controller. It just it doesn't work very well with these sausage fingers, I'll tell you that for free. Uh, but yeah, since its release, I've had friends over multiple times to play the game, and it always ends up in bloodshed, so 10 out of 10. Dead Cells, as I said in my last video, probably the most addicting game I've played this year. Even though it's technically a bit on the shorter side, as you can, in theory, beat it in about an hour. Uh, but you probably won't, since you have to beat it on a single life. It's essentially a 2D action looter. You build your character more like a Diablo 3, actually. You know, you can wield a heavy two-handed sword, a bow, rely on magic ice spells, or my favorite, laying down just a ton of turrets. But building your character happens quickly and randomly, since the game is mostly randomized. Dying makes you lose almost everything. There are some general upgrades you can make to your character that will stick with you permanently, meaning you'll not only have to figure out which playstyles are best for you, but also learn how to be more competent with playstyles you're not as good with, because depending on your loot drops, you may end up getting stuck with one you don't like. But again, the game is short, so you could always just reset if things aren't going your way. But it's also long enough that if things start to go south build-wise uh, deep into a run, you're probably still going to want to go for it. And again, with the levels being randomized, you can only prepare for what's ahead so much. You'll have to rely primarily on skill, which will surely get better as you keep playing and dying over and over and over again. Will you form alliances, or forge your own path? Life and death hang in the balance as the horrible night rages on. A few years ago, Koji Igarashi, one of the main minds behind Castlevania Symphony of the Night, had a Kickstarter for a game called Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, a spiritual successor to Symphony of the Night, of course, and one of the stretch goals was for a secondary, retro-inspired game to be made. Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, developed by Inti Creates, is just that game, meant to be an appetizer of sorts for the main project coming later. Curse of the Moon is more of a flashback to the even earlier Castlevania games, primarily on the NES, complete with that BS knockback when you take damage. There are tons of things about Castlevania that I'm very nostalgic for, but getting hit by some cheap ass flying enemy and getting knocked off a platform, causing me to lose an entire life, is not one of them. I just, I hate it so much, it's great. Also, in this game, you unlock new characters as you progress and can switch between them on the fly. Certain characters are required to reach certain areas or to get past different obstacles. I really enjoy this game, and it gives me hope in terms of Igarashi's main Ritual of the Night project that's coming later, because I may or may not have spent a couple hundred dollars or so backing it. I know, I know. I'm a Castlevania fanboy, and I, I was weak, okay? Uh, but between this and the recent news that Way Forward is actually coming out to help with that main game's development, yeah, I'm feeling better, more hopeful about what we're going to get as the final product. That was the day we enlisted. At last, we had something to believe in. Something worth fighting for. None of us yet knew. We couldn't foresee. But this war would cost us. It would 
was a battlefield, but it was where we grew up. I was not very familiar with the Valkyria Chronicles series before this latest entry came out this year, and now I'm kicking myself for not getting on board sooner. If you're unfamiliar, these games take place in a sort of sci-fi fantasy World War II setting. Uh, many of the weapons, vehicles, outfits, etc. kind of sort of fit that time period, but you'll also notice aspects like the tanks have these neon blue glowing engines, some of the soldiers run around in armor that looks medieval. It, it's a weird place. Gameplay-wise, it's a turn-based strategy game, much in the vein of, say, a Fire Emblem or XCOM title. But when you take control of a character, you move them around freely. Instead of a grid system like you'll typically find in games like this, when you take control of a character, the game goes third person, and you're able to move in any direction you want, however you want. And when you attack, you actually have to aim your shots. Again, more akin to a third-person shooter. It's a very engaging combat system that has the player taking on a more active role. Oh, and did I mention this game is also very anime? Guess it's just woman's intuition. Except that I'm a man here. Don't forget it. Like there's any chance of that. But seriously, no guy's got an ass this tight. Oh, oh. oh come on, what the hell was that for? I could ask the same of you. Are you serious? It was just a friendly butt pad between dudes. This is one that I feel should surprise no one. Indie Darling Celeste was nominated for Game of the Year at the Game Awards this year, being positioned right alongside blockbuster titles like God of War, Spider-Man, and Red Dead Redemption 2. And for good reason. This was far and away the best platforming game released this year. It's one of those, I guess, tougher platforming games, very similar actually to The End is Nigh, if you watched my top 10 Nintendo Switch games video for 2017, especially in terms of its focus on wall jumping. But like most of these games, checkpoints are very frequent, they're very generous with them. So even if some of it looks intimidating, it's really not that bad, seeing as how you always respawn pretty close to wherever you die. But this game actually has a lot more than just superb gameplay. The music, oh man, the music in this one is very on point. Even the story is written extremely well witty dialogue mixed with some pretty creepy imagery. This is easily one of the best games from 2018, whether you play it on the Switch or not. I know there are a lot of platformer fans in the Nintendo community. If you're one of them and you haven't played Celeste yet, you need to do it immediately. Octopath Traveler, what praises can I even give this game that I haven't given it already? Like I've said numerous times, it is the perfect throwback to the classic days of RPGs. A lot of, a lot of throwback stuff on this list. So much so, there wasn't, nor will there ever be, DLC for this game. Because as the game's producer famously said prior to this game's release, they are delivering a finished project from day one. Something that, uh, again, was the norm back in the day but not so much these days, is it? And this is definitely a title that uh, doesn't need more content in it. Just as is, if you're trying to, say, 100% it, uh, good luck, because even if you just want to blow through the story content, expect to put dozens of hours into it. Each of the eight characters has their own unique story for you to experience, and they're all of high quality, and the stories are told in a way that is going to make you want to see how they conclude. And the characters' playstyles are just as unique, giving you plenty of options as to how you want to build your ideal party to adventure through the world with. And ah, uh, that art style and design of the world, sorry, I just, I can't get enough of it. Big hats off to Square Enix with this game, seriously. This is probably the most Super Nintendo feeling game to be released in a, a very long time. Like I said, if you played the RPGs of that era, 
this just brings it all flowing right back. And it's a Switch exclusive, so it's, it's right where it belongs. Hollow Knight. Now this, this is video games, boys. Gameplay, level design, enemy design. These enemies in this game are so fun to fight, and there's such a variety of them, something I think a lot of games are kind of slacking on lately. Like in the forest area, the, there's these bushes that come barreling at you. You hit them to knock away all the leaves. See, it's just a little tiny guy in there, and you've got to kill him before he gets away and comes at you again. This, this is just a standard enemy. You know, there's nothing significant about it, but even the low-tier baddies in this game stand out to me. The boss fights, of course, are awesome. Just everything about this game is awesome, okay? Beautiful visuals, phenomenal soundtrack. It, it also handles story in my favorite way. There, There's little in terms of dialogue, but there's some decent lore here. Um, there's a lot to bear witness to, to discover about the world without a bunch of cutscenes or dialogue bogging everything down. It, it's got a more Souls vibe that way, actually more than just that way. Elements like dropping all your currency when you die and having to get back to your body to retrieve it. Uh, the benches are sort of like your bonfires. I'd still say it's more of a Metroidvania with the sprawling maps, tons of secret areas and passageways, and the way you have to unlock new abilities to reach new locations. Controls are tight. I mean, I'm just going to sit here and gush about the game. Uh, this is a title, really all the indies on this list are games that, even if you don't typically play indies, I know there are many people who just kind of stick with the AAA stuff. These are games you've got to play, and I dare anyone to tell me they don't belong right at the top of this list of the best Nintendo Switch games of 2018. But with that, this video is a wrap. Those were my top 10 Nintendo Switch games of 2018. Be sure to let me know what your favorite games of this past year were in the comments. And yes, I know, since I've returned, I still haven't talked about Smash Bros. Ultimate yet. Stay tuned for that. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this discussion of what I thought were the best Nintendo Switch games of 2018. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. If you want to keep the conversation going, hit me up on Twitter, at Johnny Zakari, and join my Discord, Shy Guy and Friends. Link to both in the description below. And as always... Thanks for watching.